my god, we made it. We made, we made it. it. We're here. We're here. We're, we're prep or die, and we're on the uh, we're on the Goodman Games. Yeah, we are. Happy to be here. Happy to be here. Hello, hello, everyone. So, for those that since we're new here, maybe we'll do a couple quick introductions of ourselves that we don't we don't normally do. I am I'm Jeremy. Uh, I am part of the Old Men Rolling Dice podcast, and uh, and my co-host is none other than. Yeah, Maffy from the Vactair, also an old man rolling dice, despite appearances. The best looking of the old man rolling dice. <laughs> the best the looking best of looking. the three. I am the Carrie Fisher of the Blues Brothers. You are. That is you are. Cool. You're totally. <laughs> we, who do we got? Spore Servant, welcome. Dice Station Zebra, welcome. Dark hello, Side, hello, a friends. familiar face. Agni, do the thing. We're, Agni, follow, We're doing follow the thing. Server. We are doing the we thing. We are presently doing that thing. So So we have uh, we have three <laughs> guests with us tonight, don't we? And uh, we're going to put these three guests to the test. We have a group of five old school, uh, I think four of them are really old school, black and whites. And then there's one with color. We've got five images in total and we're going to throw it out to our friends to create a one shot for us. We're going to give them just 30 minutes to create a one shot. Uh, they can go as Panic. in depth, in depth, or as as shallow as they would like. Uh, they they have, you know, no prior knowledge of the images. They just get them and go. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna we're gonna get to know them each a bit. Uh, Ruin, you you get the top spot here, Keeper Ruin. Let's let's find out who you are. Who are you, Ruin? Well, uh, I'm Ruin, and uh, I am the host of Cantrips and Coffee. Uh, we're a podcast where we, every couple of months, we try out a different tabletop system, all in the hopes of finding the best ones out there uh, that aren't by one big company that we won't name on this channel, uh, because we feel like people should experience more games, because more games are always a good thing. I agree. I agree. Uh, do you find Do you find that, like, okay, so I'm much older than you. So no. in my group, it, it's true. I swear. No, yeah. no, no. It's true. So you sell in, yourself short. In my group of people, uh, in in my my peer group, other role playing games are generally easily accepted, but I know for a fact that there are lots of people that are new to gaming through fifth edition, and maybe are hesitant to find other games are you finding that too or are people generally i definitely find that most people who are getting into it nowadays are, are getting into fifth edition and um that was my experience as well as i actually didn't start with uh fifth edition i started with warhammer fantasy and uh when i realized that everybody else seemed to play fifth edition i went oh this is strange uh and then i started playing cthulhu myself and i just went wow i just wish more people knew about all of these other games out here were willing to give them a try um because i think you're right i thought i think a lot of the newer generations that are coming to the table um are playing fifth edition and that's what they kind of expect and that's yep. the one that like most pop culture references know Absolutely, they dig their heels in there. They dig, their, and they don't realize what a wonderful world of gaming is out there. Specifically, if you want to try other genres of storytelling other than sort of high fantasy, I know that the Cantrips and Coffee guys have done Dungeon Crawl Classics a number of times on the show. We have, right? yeah, actually, we've done it twice because uh, the first time was our second system we'd ever done, and uh, you know what? We probably needed to. Uh, dig a little deeper and so we did and uh it was really uh well accepted by our our cast um a couple of us play semi-regularly now yeah yeah no i think i think the i think there's a lot of old school games that are getting on the comeback trail as long as people are willing to give them a shot and that's the real first i think that's the biggest obstacle is to just get people to step outside of what they know and try something new absolutely something new. who's next on our list tome keeper we're calling you tome keeper Tome Keeper Devin. Yes, I am a Tome Keeper of the Elder Dragons, which is a new thing that we have uh, just now started. It's a Patreon where we're going to be releasing monthly um, little um, sort of one-page details, a little bit of lore, a little bit of uh, new mechanics. Who is we? Out. Is this you and someone else? Or just you? Me. So me, uh, so I'm the Tome Keeper. Uh, we each took a name that kind of represents our job. So we have okay. the... Uh, the um, we have Tom, Kyle, and myself. 
So I'm the tome keeper because I'm the one who has all the books, but also because I'm kind of the lore keeper. I kind of keep track of everything and make sure it all makes sense. Um, then we have someone who's very into mechanics and takes care of all that, which is Kyle. And then Tom, who is the idea guy, he comes up with all the ideas and then we kind of figure out how to extrapolate. So each week on the Patreon, you'd kind of get a little bit of a different uh, piece from each of us. You'd get a, a little bit of a, an idea, kind of a, a prompt, and then you'd get um, some mechanics to work around that prompt and then maybe a, a creature or an item or something to go along with it. And then you'll get it all compiled into an encounter by me at the end of the month. Uh, and that's how that's going to work. I'm also nice. the um, uh, re representing Elder Dragons. I am the DM on Six Sides of Gaming, which is a Twitch channel and also YouTube. We're just starting Descent into Avernus, which I've been... I was going to say, you just did a session zero because I yeah. dropped in on it. I've yeah. been doing oh, serious I do prep. So <laughs> I went ahead and bought all the Planescape books, all of the manuals of the planes, uh, and all that kind of stuff for preparation because I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it because I'm the same guy. She doesn't know the difference between a demon and a devil, so she can't be in your game. Well, there you go. So J Jeremy knows because I uh, we're fighting. I, we're I did fighting. the I did the White Plume Mountain, and I had like read everything. You do have a head for lore. Yes. Yeah. Like, uh, that your title is appropriate because you do have a a good uh, a good head for lore. Because when we ran uh, White Plume Mountain with you. You had extensive background. <laughs> that was well, so much fun, though. W well beyond. Mm -hmm. Well beyond. If you want to hear us in White Plume Mountain, here's a here's a plug for Old Men Rolling Dice. You can go to Old Men Rolling Dice and download the White Plume Mountain live play. You can hear Devin, I play in it. Affy plays in it. It's a our, good time. Our good invisible time. partner of Old Men Rolling Dice also plays in it, Jason. Yes, Jason. Um, and then... Uh... And then also, I am a player on Elder Braincast, where I play a uh, bard druid who uses sea shanties as weapons. Nice. The sea shanties I return. I know your sea shanty. Is that, and that's here on Twitch? That's also on Twitch. That's Elder Braincast. Nice. Nice. Well, thank you. And Devin was on uh, a previous episode of... Mm. We're, bringing, we're, bringing, we're bringing it back on Prep or Die. Throwing and it then back. last... But certainly not least, our friend DJ Foxy, who's a, who's fam a familiar people face. should be familiar from this channel, running X Crawl. What else? Tell us about yourself, DJ. Well, I I run Crypt of the Dice Gods on the Liching Hour. That one's really fun. We got another we we do that every other Friday. Um, that's a lot of fun. Uh, basically, I just I love DCC a lot. I play it a lot. Uh, I, I get random people to join me in my crypt and I torture them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I love playing Dungeons and Dragons app for the past 12 years. I'm also a ghost tour guide. That's so fun. Like, just so random and so fun. <laughs> we should maybe have you on the podcast to talk more about that. I'd love to hear more about that. Me too. That would be something we could uh, delve into. And... Uh, you also have your own Twitch channel, though, now, don't you? You, like, do... You read from... What are you reading from on that show? Oh, uh, so right now, actually, I'm reading a... Oh, here's my book right here. I'm reading a little Jack Vance. Uh, after oh. I get done reading this, I'm going to read a bunch of Clark Ashton Smith. Uh, okay. How do you like reading Jack Vance? Because I found it hard. I actually really like it. I think he's yeah? probably my favorite writer right now. Um... I don't know. I just like a weird blend of like sci-fi and fantasy together. It's mm -hmm. kind of weird and just it hits the right notes for me. Cool. Cool. Basically. For those that don't know, Jack Vance was in the original DMG Appendix N uh, and your magic system in old school D&D known as Vance and Magic comes from Jack Vance's books. The idea that you commit a spell to memory and then it goes poof after you cast it. That's all thanks to Jack Vance. Sure so is. if you're interested in that sort of thing, Check it out. Another thing Check. is is DCC has Undying Earth or uh, Oh, you're right. Dying Earth that's coming out soon. So like, which I'm, is a I'm reading this on my channel. So if you guys want to like see what what's in that going to be in that RPG, that's a good place to check that out. If because that that's a setting for based on his mm -hmm. writings. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be sick. I think I, I can't wait for like his prismatic spray to be like a spell I can use in DCC. Yes. Yeah, yes. Like that. No, for sure. Oh, for sure. 
Well, those are our three guests this week. They're going to prep a one-shot for us, or they will die. Yep, that is part of the name. You think that's, we're joking, how, but we're not. That's how it goes. Say goodbye now. <laughs> Let's lock them in the, lo the, the, the <laughs> cones of silence. They've got the pictures. They can start prepping. We're going to check in on you about halfway through, everybody. We're going right. to pop in and say hi, see how it, how it's going and bother you. Jump scare you. It's fine. I'm going to check out who else we have in in chat here. Bye-bye. Rated B for beans. B for beans, by the way, I think is my son's DM. Oh, the name's familiar. I think we've yes. seen beans before. And Bean says Descent into Avernus is an amazing adventure. Uh, we have Hippie Grenade. Thinks Foxy's looking good. Foxy is go. always looking amazing. Yes. I think, I think, I think, okay, I'm going to call her Maggie, but I think it's Holo's. Holo Eyes? That's Holo. Maggie. Oh, look there. It's the friend. Hi, friend. Look at, the look friend. at us. Who else do we have here? Uh, Hippie Grenade. Hunter, hunt, Hunter. Hi, Artemis. Dark side, Hunter May, our lovely Jason is watching to make sure that we are not bad. Hippie Grenade says we should check out the San Antonio ghost scene. Ooh. So D and D ghost tour is that what we're doing? I don't, I don't know if I could do a ghost tour. I don't want to get sidetracked, but there's there's definitely a topic there. We have to. We, we have always to get sidetracked. And speaking of sidetracked, I'm gonna set a, a timer because we're a professional <laughs> streaming. <laughs> timer we always forget <laughs> to set the timer we, we give them a half an hour now let's and let's start looking at our images so everybody okay can okay, okay 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 you can okay. see the images that our friends are working at and they can also uh everybody in chat if you have an idea for an image that appy posts that you're like i know how i would use that image in a one shot then uh you know shout it out in the chat let's yeah let's check it out. tell us we want to know uh so mm. first image here is a very intricate looking lock it's got mm -hmm. some hands, a feet, a face. Like, it's a little there intimidating a... to look at, actually. And this is sort of a salute because there was a very famous lock in early editions of our prepper die when it was yes. over on DM Jeremy. It's here. It's here now. We won't get into that lock because it went down dark trails. <laughs> but it's a salute to the lock previously. Yep. Uh, this. So let's let's check out. The, we, we've just called this dwarven lock. The piece doesn't. The illustration didn't have a title. But it's from Lone Wolf Books, number one, Fight from the Dark. If you're not familiar with Lone Wolf Books, they're a set of basically like fantasy choose-your-own-adventure books and from the uh, from the 80s. And there was at least a dozen of them. Great books. Shout out if you've read any, uh, shout out in chat if you've read any Lone Wolf books. The artist is, uh, the artist is Gary Chalk. Which is uh, one of our if, favorites. If you watch any Prepper Die, you're going to quickly <laughs> learn. We love Jer Gary Chalk. We use his stuff a lot. A lot. A lot. Um, so locks are locks are an interesting thing in a one shot. This lock is particularly interesting. I think it's... in what I, what I like about it is the lock that we used previously had sort of a dwarf face and the keyhole was their mouth. Yeah. And we're back with the mouth as a keyhole. Yeah, we are. Because you guys are cruel to me. <laughs> this this one though sort of has stonework around the outside that we didn't yeah. have before. Yeah, and the... I want to believe that those hands maybe come together as part of the unlocking mechanism. See, I was looking at it, and I think what happens is you you unlock it, and then that pin with the bird on top comes out. Oh, and maybe that's the key. Or, or something, like maybe a lock picking thing plus one. That's what I was thinking. You know, it, not only are you unlocking this, whatever it may open, but you get like a, an extra oh, I like that. thing. If you do it properly, like if you go well, there is, if Thorgrim's you the bottom, Warhammer lock pick. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, a Dwarven lock pick is also called a Warhammer. Yep. Uh, but but if, you, if the hands came together, there's sort of a staff at the bottom of the lock. You see what I'm looking at there? Kinda, yeah. Hollow Eyes has already said you have to kiss the lock. I love that idea. Yeah. I like the idea that if you, that it has to be a dwarf that kisses the lock. <laughs> Just because, because dwarves are so like proud and well, it looks like a dwarf, right? Yeah. That too. No, I'm could, I'm thinking that whole could, thing comes right out. 
and it's uh, like a stiletto. Rated B for beans. The the one shot does not have to be fantasy. Uh, if the if the if the G, we're system neutral here, you can do whatever you want. Okay. So if 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 this speaks to you is on a sci-fi level or on a modern level, you know that whatever goes, whatever goes. Absolutely. How high up is the lock's placement? Well, if a dwarf a is kissing it, then. It's got to be a little bit smaller. Well, then there's a question of scale, right? How big? Ooh. Yeah, like is the, the hand and fist and face all like normal massive. sized? What if it's massive? Ooh, what if it's like, like for giant a giant? Size? Yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> oh my gosh, we said that together. Yep. Uh, let, let me just check chat to make sure we haven't missed anything here. Uh, let's see. Does anybody got... in chat have an idea? How would you use this? Uh, Penguin Frog. Hey, thanks for joining us. Hi. I saw Mayan with this. Yeah, it does kind of have that feel. Yeah. I think the border trim uh, is definitely sort of Mayan influenced. And the the sort of the top of the scepter that's going to join if the hands come together, that looks like it could be Mayan in... I also like the know. idea if you like mess up on the lock pick the foot comes out and kicks you in the face. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Instead Especially of like the... poison or acid damage, you just get kicked in the face. Because <laughs> yeah. you think like you're yeah. right in there, right? You're right in there. Oh. <laughs> and you take a boot. Take Go a boot. to the face. The Bludgeoning damage. <laughs> a, to a, a toenail in the eye. Ooh. How, what's your feeling on toenails? Uh, I'm fine with toenails <laughs> as long as they stay on the toes. Okay. Yeah. Um, clipping toenails, though the the clippings, then they're gross. No, that's fine. You as just don't want I... a full toenail coming off. No, no. I am notorious for stu uh, stubbing your feet. Stubbing my toes. Yeah. Yeah, Horrible. that's uncomfortable. Pain. I can't even tell you makes my pain. knees all wiggly. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Next image. Yes, please. Okay. I don't want to talk about your wiggling knees. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we change over, D North Cut says looks like an oversized keyhole on a door, so maybe you have to shrink down somehow to get through after you open it. Oh, I like that. So kind of like an Alice in Wonderland kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Jason's already yelling at us to stay in topic. I know, I know. All right, so I next know. image. We're on, a We're on a timeline here, people. We're on a timeline. Looks like Let's a do. warty giant <laughs> hand reaching into a tunnel to grab Can someone and yank him out. Can we just stop at this image for a moment? This is my favorite image from this week. My favorite. You know, you're you're cruel. You're cruel there's to just me. Something, there's, there's just something about it. Uh, we have a fist that's grabbed someone. I feel like there's I a Richard Gere joke okay. here. <laughs> It's definitely a Richard Gere joke yeah. here. Uh, what about, like, do you think this has to be attached to a giant? I don't like the idea of it being attached to a giant. I like the idea that it's some kind of a trap, whether it be like a stone fist that comes down and bludgeons someone mm. in the hallway. I also like the idea that it is coming down, grabbing someone, and then carrying them away. Yeah, you know, you're right. It could be like, like a if, it's, if it's attached to a monster, yeah. I'm not sure about that. A wall master a la Zelda. Okay. Ooh. I'm an old fart, so I'm unfamiliar. Do you understand this? Uh, Vaguely. Zelda wasn't really reference? my thing, but yes, I do understand. Uh, Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle of Compound <laughs> W. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Get right in there on those warts. Because of, of the warts? Yeah. The warts are disconcerting. See that? I feel like almost oversized hag or like a troll i feel like this hand had to snatch him with a certain amount of speed for his boot to fall off mm. good point you know what i mean yeah yorkus rex says temple of the historian monks <laughs> historian monks. <laughs> i like it uh, i like a, it i'm a big he-man so i immediately thought of fistor yeah yeah you would yeah, and there's a beautiful Fister meme, which we're not going to get into, but it's out there. Find it. It's amazing. Uh, Fisto, that's it. Fisto. Fisto from He-Man. Uh, I immediately thought of him when I saw this image. Uh, so this image comes from 
Legends of the Lone Wolf, number mm -hmm. 11, The Secret of Kazan Ud. Uh, it's another it's another one of these lone wolf books. The artist is again Gary Chalk. Our favorite. We told everybody we told everybody we loved him. This is from a little later though. This is from ninety four. Oh. The previous one was from eighty four. So that's over a ten year span. It's still going. Good, you, still good with for the same you, style. Gary Chalk. Good for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I like the fact that the fist takes up the whole hallway. I'm reminded of things like Tomb of Horrors. Where yeah. the juggernaut takes up the whole hallway and you just you get run over if you're down. So I would like there's some, no chance. Yeah, I would like some kind of an. It's inevitable if this thing go, grabs it grabs the you know it grabs the first party member and you're yeah. screwed. You're screwed. So is it the first party member that like fails a saving throw or is it literally just marching order? No save. Hmm. I'm torn on that. I like the idea. Well, I mean, it takes up the whole hallway. It's going to grab the first person. Yeah, but or is it coming from behind them? Because, you know, usually the squishies tend to stay near the back. the back. Oh, I love that it comes from. It came from behind. <laughs> it came from behind Giant us. Fist. Yes. Big B's poxed hand. Ooh. So, like, Ooh, not only gross. does it grab you, but it gives you some sort of. Um, like, it gives you herpes. Yeah. Some sort of disease. Yeah. Some, something that causes lumps. Yep. <laughs> lumps, warts, boils, blisters. It's horrible. I love it. <laughs> you got scolded. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Jay said. That's a, we're okay, Jay. We're okay, I promise. Hugs and kisses. Uh <laughs> let's let's see, let's see the next one. Let's see the All next right. one. So we have a lock. We have uh, some sort of a trip fat trip uh tat. Uh, trap. I don't like the idea that that fist is attached to a monster. Hey, Keisha and Sunshine. Sunshine. Sunshine, well, we haven't talked in a while. Rainbows. I hope you're doing well. Okay. The Dark Crypt. Yes. So it looks like we've got some pillars, some sarcophagi, and even like, it almost looks like the base of a statue in the back there in front of that one large pillar where something yes. has gone missing. A body? A body or a statue of some sort. It looks like there's blood on that. It does look a little bit like blood, yeah. Yeah. Or some this sort of So we, we call this one the uh, a Dark Crypt. It's from Warlock on Firetop Warlock of Firetop Mountain from nineteen eighty two. This is our first non Gary Chalk piece. The the artwork is by Russ Nicholson. Yeah. Who illustrated all of Warlock on Firetop Mountain and, uh, again, a choose-your-own-style adventure book like the Lone Wolf books. Uh, shout out in chat if you've read Warlock on Firetop Mountain. Yeah. Uh, There's also a lot of Firetop really, really, Ooh. really nice intricate detail on the base of this sort of plinth. You yeah. know, you got like a face and a tongue hanging out. I would, yeah, yeah I would say like sacrificial rock of some sort with the blood on it. Well, and that's some sort of pole over top of it. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. a sheet over top of it, like what you put over a casket. I yeah. noticed some of the other uh, sarcophagi or caskets have have wrappings or linen laid over it. Mm -hmm. I hope th I hope somebody gets into detail about that, but maybe not. Maybe not. Hard to say. It's and it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. If you're doing a fantasy role play game of some type, and you're you're Rooms like this is what the game was built on, in my opinion. Like, there's three caskets, there's a strange altar, there's blood on the altar. Like, this is quintessential OSR to me. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's It's mm -hmm. got the spoopy vibe. It's got some details that are quite disturbing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And everything's cr like cl crowded in shadow at the back towards yeah. the back of the piece. Yeah, definitely. And the pillars, you... maybe the pi maybe the pillar is involved in the encounter somehow. Mm, like a lightning rod or something like that. Yeah, I mean, on a sim on a simplest level, it would just be nice for this, uh, you know, these to burst open and you know ghouls come crawling out or oh whites. the comments? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Mm hmm. It would be spooky. Yes, so Penguin raises a good point. So why are the caskets not organized correctly? Something's happened here, right? 
what happened in here that left them strewn rather than in place that penguin great great catch on that absolutely i think i think that that's something that uh yeah why are they what's going on yeah the uh, uh latest sacrifice didn't like it <laughs> a multitude of caskets party members must choose one each some Ooh. have bones some have consequences maybe they have to get in the caskets creepy up the creep factor Ooh. you can start describing Ooh. like the claustrophobia the smell the darkness yeah mm-hmm mm-hmm mm -hmm. freaky yeah I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. <laughs> Shall we bug one of our friends? Yeah, let's go bug. H how are we doing on our timeline here? We are got we okay? 16 minutes left for them to finish up. Okay, let's do that. Alrighty, so we're going to start off with our friend Ruin from Cantrips and Coffee. Hello, friends. Did we scare you? Just a little. Oh. We, we have had people actually jump when we come in on them. We don't mean to much. We do, we do. So tell me, you've got five images in front of you. Is there one that sparked the idea of where you were going to go with your one shot? Or is there one that just, you don't know what you're gonna do with, it doesn't fit? The one that I'm not sure of is, was the key, like the lock. Yeah. Um, at first, I was like, I don't even know. Like, how would I use this? So I am I am going. Do you want me to reveal what I'm going with for nope. system? No, no. Oh, but okay. We'll, 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 oh, well, what are you going with for system? No, I want to know what system you're using. Okay, well, I'm going to go with Call of Cthulhu. Ooh. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, so we're doing some sort of a horror, mind-shaking... I think everything here works for, for you, to be totally honest. Mm -hmm. You know what? It took me a second. It, the, the the lock was really tripping me up and then i i realized what i wanted to do with it and i, I think i've got it okay okay yeah i like it i like it is there one that you so the lock you were like not sure of yeah. all the other ones you were kind of like the, these work for me oh yeah totally like the the reptile lord dude he totally fits in with mythos if you need him to oh i think so yeah the tomb that's easy cthulhu if mm -hmm. not pulp cthulhu mm. yeah yeah yeah, Our friends in the good. audience haven't seen that one yet, so spoilers. Ooh. Which one? The Which lizard. One? Oh, we're getting there. That's fine. we're getting there. We're getting there. That's fine. Okay. Well, we're gonna let you get back to it. We're about halfway through your time. Okay. Well, I think I think I'm gonna be good. I'm uh, I'm kind of on a roll. Okay. Go for it. We're gonna let you get back to your roll. We'll talk soon. And now we're gonna bug Devin, who looks a little bit. Uh... <laughs> Are you stressed, friend? You look a little stressed. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's try it's fine. I have the general idea. It's trying to get the all the like the aspects and mechanics of it to fit together. Is it mm. is there one there that you were like this? This is the one that gets my brain going in the right direction. Um, I think to be honest, it was the uh, the, the the big stone fist grabbing onto oh, the guy. Like, that's one, yeah, that's the one that caught my attention. That's kind of where everything came out of. I like that you interpret it as a stone fist. Yeah, that's that's what I see with it. Because when we were chatting with chat, we were like, is it attached to something? Is this just a giant that, that reaches down and grabs someone? Or is it like a trap that comes in the form of stone fist? Don't give both? him ideas to Why help. Not both? Why not both? What is wrong look, with you? Look, look, I'm talking to my boy here. <laughs> look, one of them is going to die. Don't get one attached. Okay, fine. <laughs> Fine, fine. Is there one that you're having a hard time with? Um, at this point, honestly, the, I'm just trying to figure out a way to use the key that isn't just a keyhole. Like I'm trying okay. to find a way to use it that it's not just a lock. It's got. I want to try and do something interesting with it. Yeah. And everything else, I've kind of managed to fit together in a nice package. But the, the the lock is the one I'm trying to figure out how to get in there. Well, we'll put you back to it. You're about halfway through. All right. And we'll see you soon. Good luck. Last but not least, my ball. Hi, Fox. Oh, okay. Hello. Hello, my love. How's it going? Pretty good. Pretty good. I like these images. They're you do? Good. Is there one, is there one that you really like that was like I'm gonna start here. This is where. I think 
the hand was really cool. I liked that hand a lot. The hand is popular. Yeah, it's like just really neat the way it's just pulling you into something. Mm -hmm. into yeah, we strange area. <laughs> we we like we like it too. Uh, we, I'm surprised though that you're not the first one to mention it. Let's just say that uh, it's been a favorite. So that's awesome. Is there one that doesn't work that you're like I don't know what to do with this one? Um, for like a second, the eye stumped me, but then I kind of figured out where I wanted to put it at. Good. Good. Yeah. Do you, are we, is this another X crawl? No, this isn't X, X crawl. This time it's, we're, we're in Hyperborea. Okay. Okay. I like Hyperborea. That's me acceptable. <laughs> yes. Yes. Acceptable. Acceptable. Although I, I really would, I, I love X crawl. You, you have, uh, got me enamored with that game, but. We'll talk later. Yeah, I don't want to take up your time. <laughs> you get back. You get back to prepping, and we'll we'll be back to you soon. Nice. Alrighty. Okay. G Blaster, do you D DM Jeremy? Do you have a love for the stuff? Do I know what the stuff is? I don't know. Are we talking I devil's just... lettuce? Devil's lettuce? What? Is that the stuff? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I thought when I first read it. But I'm loving the um, Penguin Frog's idea of uh, a, a lock related to a god that locks truths behind a keyhole. So it's a giant thing that you have to prepare a ritual for and look through the keyhole to see a truth. T oh, I, I'm gonna go. If, I'm gonna go a step further with that. That there is no actual key for the lock. You have to speak. Uh, you know, a truth about yourself. Ooh, and it has lock. to be a deep truth, not like I have five fingers and five toes. Yeah, it has to be like I spit on Susie in grade two. That was me. <laughs> Do like a whole Goonies monologue. I went to the movie theater and I threw up and then everybody started throwing up on each other. Well, I think probably <laughs> instead of a truth, I think your players would probably be easier. They have to tell a secret. Yes. On top of secret. that, then they have to rele reveal a secret to their party, right? So they have to whisper a secret into the... Yeah. 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 I like that. I like that. Uh, Ryan okay. from Canadian Ryan Dice. Ryan from Canadian Dice is here. Uh, I have not sworn once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is, is our Achilles heel. This is our Achilles heel. It is a struggle. Is to, is to, is to bring our... Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's because we're Canadian that we, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think we're all Canadian here tonight, except for Foxy. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a full Canadian rep tonight. Hi, we're Canadian and taking over. <laughs> you have a, if, if, speaking of which, before we move on to our next two images, if you would like to be on Prepper Die. Yes. You can always send us an email at oldmenrollingdice at gmail.com. I know email is old fashioned and people are like, what is with that? But it's my easiest way to keep track of who we have on the list and who yeah. we don't have on the list. So we have a spreadsheet, like we got a whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Oldmenrollingdice at gmail.com. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's get to our next, let's get to our next image here, which I really, really like. Um. Well, if you if being here would make it a commie, uh, commie, what am I saying? Real world sinking in. The Russians if are being, coming. If being here would be a comedy, we want you. We yeah. want you. This not, is anything but serious. Yeah, we are not serious at all. So Hush Radden, come on over. Send yeah. me an email. Email us. Do it. DM uh, us. Talk to us. We're yeah. lonely. And Judge James is here now. I love I love I love that uh, I love that over here. Oh, and he, you live in New Brunswick. Please. I'm yes. Probably blowing out the, I'm probably blowing out the mic's audio. No, levels. you're I fine. Apologize. I'm watching. Come on over. Penguin Come Frog. On over. Doesn't matter. One system. That's totally OK. We don't care about the system. Just, Just give us a good one shot. Write a story. We're, we're not worried about monsters. And we stats don't and stuff. care. We don't care. I mean, we let, you know, we let Affy DM, so. Wow. The audacity. How You're dying you, on sir. Monday. How dare you? 
Abby yeah, is you. a good DM. <laughs> I, I look, chat, don't turn on me. Uh, she's a good DM. Thanks, okay. Maggie. You're my favorite. Let's talk about this image because I really like it. It comes from an old school AD and D module. Yep. If you know the AD and D module, uh, uh, put that maybe in chat. Let us know. I won't tell. I won't. I won't spoil it yet. If you know the module this guy's from, put it in chat. It's an old AD and D module. Uh, the name that we are calling this is Sakatha. Ooh. Sakatha. Sakatha. There you go, Blaster. Blaster, you you <laughs> you Blaster gets the cookie. Someone yeah. send Blaster a cookie. Uh, Tomb of the Lizard King. You're absolutely right. Tomb of the Lizard King. Sakatha, 1982. Now we weren't 100 percent sure on the artist for this one, but we're pretty sure that it is Harry Quinn who uh, who did this. And yep. this is in the module. This is a vampire lizard folk, uh, a vampire lizard man. And uh, I like this image. I, like I want to know: Are they going to talk? Are we going to learn about this this rod that he's holding? There's also a number of skulls hanging in the background. This is a pretty fancy throne he's on. There's lots going on here. Ooh, Maggie is saying from the coffin dance game, you get various pieces of clothing. You must don and do a charisma check to put on a fashion show. <laughs> for the lizard, for the lizard king. I am into it. We're gonna do some RuPaul's Drag Race up in here. Exactly what I was just thinking. I'm like, how do I turn this <laughs> into something about RuPaul? Sashay, yeah. Shantae. <laughs> uh, Dark Side never played in Affy's D and D games, but I'm sure she's good. Oh, thank you, Dark Side. I'm glad someone appreciates me. You're such. <laughs> You're such a bus. You're such a butt kisser. I, uh, okay, uh, I do it for the love of stuff. If you know what I mean. If you're talking about an Instagram user, Blaster, I know exactly what you mean. I think I know who you are. Then, ooh. Oh my. Do it with the pinky, so it's uh, so it's Doctor Evil. So. One million dollars. <laughs> uh, Lazy Bat okay, Dandy says, on, "Dance Judge your butt off, or he takes your face." Judge James has given us something here. Let's let's look at that for a second. So right. the monster is the skull pendant, which is actually the soul gem for a dragon who was slain at birth by a callous band of reavers. Cal I like that you've added a callous band of reavers. Not just any reavers, a callous <laughs> band of reavers. But his soul refused to die. He slipped into the cudgel that was used to kill him and eventually overtook the cleric who slew him over the years until by the time he became a priest king he had been corrupted nice master pass uh, rage filled soul of the Dracon. i love that there's like a bad guy in a bad <laughs> guy in the in the staff now would i smash or pass this guy total smash really oh for sure I like soft skin, so I'm going to say pass. Have you ever felt a reptile? That's illegal where I come from. <laughs> We're from the same country and the same province. We live yeah, 20 I minutes from each other. I don't want to know what you're doing. I don't want to know what you're doing. <laughs> See, the, the chat is saying smash. I noticed there's a lot of smash in chat. Yeah. Except James. Uh... Yeah, James is with me. <laughs> Reptiles are no friend of man. Exactly. Exactly. Did we lose did we lose Rune on I'm not sure. I did just kind of move the cams around as needed, but Okay. Well I hope he's still there. Oh, I hate to do this, but I need to go AFK for a couple minutes. That's okay. That's yeah. okay. Hey, he's losing time. That's on him. And if we if we have to kill someone, we know who now. Yeah, it's we definitely Rune. Okay. <laughs> uh let's do our la how are we for time and let's do our last image two and a half minutes okay let's get the last image up quick then <laughs> all righty <laughs> the last do image yes. uh looks like it needs some visine i kind love of, that they're there's like shaped. mechanical <laughs> it kind of looks egg-shaped to you the actual like white and the iris yeah looks egg-shaped i think it's i think it's just distortion Go, okay, with gonna, go with me okay. on this. Go with me on this. I'm with I'm with you. I'm with you. Keep okay. Going. So this is a incubator of some sort. 
Okay. And it's floating okay. around in like a viscous fluid. It is an eyeball. It can see. But if it emerges from said viscous fluid, it becomes yes. something a lot more horrifying. Like? I don't know. I haven't gone that far yet. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. Do you know what I thought when I saw this? What's up? I thought, would, wouldn't it be cool if like we're using some sort of necromant necromantic energy here and this is essentially a... Um, a beholder eye being Ooh. kept like maybe it can still shoot through the glass the beam of its eye but it only has the one beam yeah but maybe there's multiple of these in the dungeon there doesn't have to be one right <laughs> Maggie says it becomes a child who on average costs around 1250 USD a year to raise <laughs> that's oh, the oh, most oh. horrifying tale of all Penguin, Penguin and I are in the same lane they're wannabe saying beholder. it's a wannabe beholder. I did have in the dungeon that we did for Extra Life last year, at the end of last year, you didn't get to it, but there is a beholder in process. And it's only got like three of its eye stalks and it doesn't have nice. its like anti-magic cone or anything yet, but it's, it's, it's working on it. Judge James says it's a magical incubator that allows the beholder to remove their eye, put it in the pod, and the eye can roll around, scout, and use the eye ability. Yes, I like that. Mm, futuristic security camera. What if, like, let's t let's just step out of fantasy for a moment and go sort of like maybe something like a Mut Mutant Crawl Classics or Gamma World, and we have a sort of cyborg uh, beholder and all of the eye stalks are inside these little things floating around it. Mm. Oh. There's right. our timer. Game I over. Like it. It's all You're done. done. You're done. Sh shut up. <laughs> and Ruin is still missing. Well, let's go back. Ruin will get here. I have 100% faith in him. In MCC, the eye would be specifically grown by the, in the green fluid because the fluid is the living being in the eye mm -hmm. is a bio construct. Yeah, Pencils I like down, that. friends. I like that. Watching you. Hands up. So, no cheating. So we're ba we're <laughs> back. Ruin, Ruin is on a tiny break. Hopefully he'll be able to come back to us. Um, Did we did we finish? Do we have enough that we're... Are we confident? I think I could run something with this. You think so? Gavin? I mean, I'm never satisfied, but I could run a one-shot with this. <laughs> Never satisfied. I, Never satisfied. He's he's always thirsting for more. Oh, we still have lots of people in chat. Cyborg zombie beholder. That's exactly. Mm, yeah. It's yeah. a mech for the beholder. D Northcutt says. There we go. What Penguin is satisfied? with the satisfied. <laughs> Penguin wants to know what is satisfied. I can't get no. Apparently, it's Mick Jagger. That is a great song. Okay, well, you know, Ruin's not <laughs> Ruin's not here to defend himself. So, um, you know, can we decide whether Foxy or Devin goes first? I have my rock, D12. Paper, you have a D12? Rock, paper, scissors? Or... No, you I'm can do rock, paper, rock, scissors, paper, scissors if you scissors. want. D12 is cool, too. Whatever you... I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't care. I don't do care. Do rock, paper, scissors. Okay, let's do a rock, paper, scissors right now. Okay. One... Hopefully we don't lag. Okay. One, two, oh. three, shoot. <laughs> Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Where are we good? Uh, scissors. I both scissors. Okay. Yeah, scissors. <laughs> oh, Rock, back. Scissors, shoot. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Stop Sorry. with your nonsense. <laughs> Just roll the d12. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you can't do Rock, paper, scissors with three people, can you? Uh, it would take a lot longer. Yeah. <laughs> Vulcan Damn, neck pinch. Can. Okay, Ruin has the first four numbers. Uh, Devin has the next four, and Foxy has the next four. We're not going to go through the numbering because I always get confused. Okay, well, to save your brain, Foxy is Thank going you. first. Foxy's going first. Are you yes. comfortable with that, Foxy? Yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm good okay. to go. Uh, hit okay. us with your best shot. Fire away. Okay, so I kind of had my the premise of this adventure is it's set in Neolithic Hyperborea, uh, and there's a bunch of because that's kind of like my my uh, setting that I'm developing right now. So I was like, why not set it in that? Uh, so anyway, basically my idea is that a bunch of cave people wandered into this cave complex. Uh, and they found all these weird lizard people down there. They're these kobolds. They're kobolds. Uh, but anyway, they're they're living in the, 
these caverns, like these series of caverns that uh, maybe used to be a city, but it's kind of like ruinous and fallen apart over the years, like gone on a dis into disrepair. Um, and there's like these warring kobold clans that are like fighting each other. And I'd, I'd say they'd probably like a whole drama with that. And like the party would have to figure out exactly like what they want to do. Um, and I think that maybe there's a kobold prince who actually is benevolent. He's like actually like a, like not a bad guy. Um, you know, if they knew how to speak kobold anyway, they could figure that out. Um, otherwise they just wind up getting maybe captured by kobolds and eventually run away or something like that. Anyway, they get through all that drama. Um, and if they align themselves with the Cobalt Prince, then he shows them a secret passage into this mysterious ruin. That apparently there is this, um, the, the main issue here is that there is this, uh, Cobalt Lich King. And he, he has been alive for centuries, and he's been living in this ruin, and his shaman, which is like, like a kind of inherited thing among these, like, Cobalts, like, the Cobalt Shaman, like, goes to, when he gets of age, he replaces the previous kobold shaman. He like kills him, and he takes his place in this ruin as, as like the, uh, I don't know, like, sayer, soothsayer for the the lich king who doesn't even emerge from his chamber. So anyway, this this kobold prince is not about that system. He doesn't like that because kobold kobold lich king is kind of a jerk. Uh, so anyway, so he if if you align yourselves with him, he shows you the secret way into the into the crypt, this um, ruin kind of like where this kobold lich king lives which is kind of where i can't what i came in mind was the first thing i thought with that was the uh the like room with those two like tombs like with the uh crypts looking things with like they look like coffins kind of that uh yep yeah and i would pillars, say coffins or sarcophagi Whatever. sarcophagi something like that uh kind of my idea is that there's that crack in the in the roof there i think that the the kobold Prince, like the kobold rogue who's a prince, he, he knows the secret path through the caverns above. But there are giant spiders up in the caverns above, so they have to fight the giant spiders before you get into there. Uh, but anyhow, in the, in that room with all those sarcophagi, that little there's like this platform with this weird looking hole in the top of it, like in the middle of the room with this sarcophagi. It's like right there. Yep. I was thinking that that eye is like in the center of that weird like cracked hole there. And the eye, like, looks around the room to see if there's, like, um, intruders. And if it sees, like, intruders, basically these three kobold warlords that the, that the lich has, the kobold lich king has put in these sarcophagi, he killed them, and then he made him, them his eternal, you know, minions in, in his, like, in this area here. And if, if the eye sees somebody when they intrude into this little area, the kobold, the kobold warlords, like, come to life and they try to kill the party. Uh, and then basically at the end of this hallway, there is a, uh, a door there that, that key, that door, basically there's like, um, I'm thinking that that key right there, if you enter with the Cobalt Prince, he knows how to pick the lock because he has like a false key that he made, but otherwise you have to enter in the other direction. So if you didn't make friends with the Cobalt Prince, then you're going in the front entrance. So the front entrance, I was thinking kind of involves that hand it's like grabbing somebody so the front entrance has this big mural on it of the kobold lich king himself and he's like standing triumphantly and the observant player will notice that there are um like if, if they go up and try to inspect the mural they'll notice that there are like what look like various types of people like at the foot of the kobold king like in in like pain and agony in the mural and if you do notice that, um, or if you actively, like, sort of look at it, or, you know, it could be, like, a, an intelligence check, depending on, like, GM style. But anyway, if you, if you don't notice it, um, the hand will reach out of the mural. It's the Cobalt Lich King's hand, and he reaches out and grabs you and pulls you into the mural, unless you make, like, a, a reflex save. And he yanks you into the mural, and then you're trapped in there, and you're, like, one of the tormented souls inside the mural. Um... But if you do not, if, unless if you bow to the Cobalt King, if you bow to the mural, then it doesn't grab you. But you have to kind of, you know, just decide to do that, basically. So most players wouldn't do that unless, you know, they just decided to. Uh, you never know. You never right. know. 
Could be. Somebody could try decide. I mean, we so debated we Smash or Pass, so. Right. Um, <laughs> so, I kind of think, I'm thinking after that, there's the atrium, there's this huge atrium area where in the center there's this uh, skeleton of a dragon. And the thing is, the Cobalt Lich King killed this dragon that his tribe worshipped. And he, like, keeps it in this room as a trophy. But the, also, another thing that's living in this in this room is, like, a kobold shaman who, like, if the party comes into that room, he, like, resurrects the dragon, like, the dragon skeleton. And it tries to fight the party. Uh, and then he'll try to escape uh, and, like, warn the kobold lich king. But if you apprehend him and you defeat the dragon, uh, then then he'll, he will bring you into this room that's to the side of that room that has this sort of chest thing it's like it'll only unlock if you say the kobold king's true name you have to say his true name which, rumpelstiltskin right the, the, the shaman knows <laughs> yeah something like that um balthazar or something i don't know rumple uh, scale skin there we go rumple scale skin wait a minute are we that. saying the kobold king or the kobold lich king's name Cobalt Lich King, yeah, same okay. same thing, yeah. Uh, so if you say it, then then this like chest opens up. Otherwise, the room fills with gas. So if you if you manage to like I don't know maybe get the the Cobalt Shaman to tell you that somehow by like questioning him, or if you pass like an int check, intelligence check, or if you're maybe you're a cleric and you have some kind of like knowledge of that, then you can say that, and then it'll open up this chest, and you can get this key that's inside the chest. It will open up the uh, that door that leads to his his um, treasure room, and there's this treasure room back there that has like all the Cobalt King's riches. And from that treasure room, there's a passageway that leads to the Cobalt King, the the Cobalt Lich King's final lair. And along the sides of the the, the walkway, as you're going to the final lair, there's all these like murals of his all the atrocities that the that the Cobalt Lich has has committed throughout his life, you know, just like resurrect, like necromancy and all this other crazy stuff. And then you finally get to that area where the, the Lich King is, the Cobalt Lich King is at, and that's that's that um, Lizard King guy. He like he's sitting on a throne, and you know, immediately as you enter the room, he'll like get up and try to try to fight you. Um, and in his trophy room, there's all these weapons and stuff, and you can grab some of them, but he doesn't seem that all that frightened of the party at all, and he'll try to, like, just put them down pretty quickly. Uh, and I'm thinking in this same room, there's a, a door, that, a secret passageway in this same room that leads to a portal. There's, like, this portal in the ground of this, like, small side room, basically. And what that is is it's a portal to Agartha, like the home of the of the kobolds, the lizard people. And if you if you uh, pass a spell check, you can activate that portal to Agartha. Uh, so that and that will bring you to the lizard folks, and then I could like lead to an entirely different campaign, like away from Hyperborea in the far north. Uh, yeah. I also put that um, there's a like a secret way to get into the the Cobalt Lich King's final sanctum. If you like knock down this wall that's connected between the atrium area, uh, it's kind of like thin, and you could you could like strength check bash it down, but you'd have to pass a luck check or the whole ruin collapses in on itself, and then just everybody dies. Like, <laughs> So that, There's your TPK, kinda... Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, home, if... uh, yeah uh, uh, home renovators, uh, watch for that main support wall. <laughs> right, yeah, that's kind of the idea there. Um, so yeah, I think I could I think I think could run some people through this. I think that'd be kind of fun. Hell yeah, I think so too. Fun. I think so too. I, I like the fact that, so when I looked at the, li the lizard guy, I immediately went to like, lizard man or you know maybe even troglodyte i like that you went to kobold i like that you went to kobold i think my favorite is the mural the idea that you get pulled into the mural and become one of those people groveling yeah no name for the lich the kobold lich king though hey i kind of like balthazar now that i've said that i feel like his name is balthazar but like I, that's, I like a, kyle. that's a name. <laughs> <laughs> kyle the kobold lich. xx I kyle like xx <laughs> 
I kind of, my kind of my idea is that he's like the ancestor of like the kobolds that live in these caves. Like he's like an ancient kobold. That he looks a little different because he's like, um, like way way older than the kobolds that are living in there. Oh, so they've sort of evolved from him. Yeah, he's like the sure. great ancestor. I just like the idea of the kobold lich. Yeah, it's like the smallest monster in the monster manual combined with one of the biggest monsters in the monster manual. Right, people like kobolds, so I was like, why not? Yeah, no, I agree. Sure. I agree. Well, thank you. Let's let's move right along to our next one. Are you rolling the dice to see? Uh, Twelve. Odds. So that would bring us to Devin. Devin. Okay. I went a very different direction. Cool. How uh, dare you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of go through what I have here, and I'm gonna relate to kind of how I got the inspiration for the things from the pictures, because uh, it makes a lot more sense that way, I think. Anytime so, you can tie back to the pictures, we love that. Our story begins in the land before time, when the Sauruk Empire of the dinosaur Saurians were reigning over the Thunderlands. And then we cut about a, a tens of thousands of years to the future, where uh, some archaeologists are digging into places they probably should not be digging into, and they unearth what appears to be some kind of um, large stone head. Uh, they continue to dig down, and it, it turns out it's actually attached to a large stone body. And they start trying to figure out what it is. And in doing so, they accidentally activate what I'm calling the stone quake juggernaut. Now, when I say a large stone head, this thing is massive. This is a fortress-sized statue that bursts from the excavation and activates as the Sauruk Lord inside, operating off of his throne, as seen pictured here, has been kept locked in a time stasis and has been preserved this whole time as he was imprisoned and the enchantments that had imprisoned him have worn away over the tens of thousands of years and the uh, presence of new life force and souls has reawoken the latent energies powering this gargantuan construct and it begins to make its way across the countryside heading for the nearest settlement and that is of course where the party comes in. They are brought in to deal with this massive construct. As it happens, there are massive uh, mechanical eyes attached to this construct, and they're shooting petrification beams at everything, and it's a big problem. Uh, so they have to find their way to get inside this massive thing. So if you think like kind of a Shadow of the Colossus kind of situation where there's literally this giant stone mech just traipsing over the countryside, and they first have to figure out how to get into the thing. Um, they can get in through any sort of, uh, I mean, it's a magical stone, so there aren't necessarily joints, but there are entrances. They can try to find an entrance. The higher up they go, the easier it will be to gain access. So if they want to try to get into one of the feet, they're going to have to be either very well timed, they might get crushed, but they have to make sure they can get in and get into where the uh, there are openings. Once they are inside, if they went in through a limb, they'll have to make their way through the limb. Um, it is theorized uh, that they would probably start with one of the bottoms of the legs. And the legs are having beams crisscrossing all along the inside, kind of like arteries that pass through. And they would have to climb all the way up this. Now, this is the kicker. I was looking at this guy's throne, this Sorok's throne, and I noticed these faces. He's got one in each armrest and one on either side of the back. So this construct is powered by the souls of his ancient servants his his magist mage lords who were imprisoned within this uh construct to power it with their souls and the throne holds their soul soul stones and their faces have projected out from this throne and he's able to communicate with the souls and they can communicate with him and by sitting on the throne he's able to command and control all four souls in unison allowing them to move each soul is currently bound to one of the limbs, right arm, left arm, left leg, right leg. So as they're making their way up this leg, having to climb these pillars and get to the top, they will have to be dealing with one of the souls who has control over this limb, and they are going to be defending it by shaping the stone into various guardians. Now this can take the shape of earth elementals, you could literally just have giant stone feet come out of the side of the wall and try to slam them off of the pillars, sending them down to the bottom where they would inevitably become paste. 
<laughs> and as this is happening, the soul will be talking to them. And each soul has a distinct personality. One would be morose, uh, just very depressed that he's in this position. One would be gleeful that he finally has something to keep himself busy after spending tens of thousands of years alone. He finally has some fun. Uh, but they're all going to be like, making note of the fact that if, play, if the players choose to listen and understand, they will start to get the feeling that these, these souls don't want to be here. They are trapped and are kind of being forced into doing this. Uh, even though some of them may enjoy it, it, the way that they'll be talking will be ways to insinuate that they are indeed prisoners here. Uh, the morose one would be a little more obvious. I'd probably start with that one to get the ball rolling so they realize like, I'm terribly sorry, but I have to kill you now. I don't want to, but such is life. And, you know, he just continually pummels them, and then they get up into one of the arms, and it could be, oh, goody, now I can finally crush something. After all these years of being locked away, and you kind of go with that. And when they get to the torso, after making their way up through the leg, they will come to a chamber, um, and I similarly see these sarcophagi and, and kind of took them as what they were, and there would be four sarcophagi in the room, each one containing the corpse of the servant that was bound, that's whose soul was bound to this construct. Now, they won't be able to open these sarcophagi. They will be basically indestructible, wreathed in all kinds of enchantments, but there will be a, a sort of an altar or a dais in the center of this chamber, and uh, there will be four indentations. Now, powering each of these limbs is a rune of power which can be removed i would probably put it midway up the limb or possibly uh, hidden behind uh, some challenge they have to get through but they have to get the the rune and when all four have been placed in the center they then have to align them correctly i would imagine probably just using a, like a simple puzzle like each rune have multiple symbols and you just have to align all four symbols so that they match uh perpendicular on all the connecting sides something like th something simple um we can do something like that and as they go through them obviously the stone arms would have stone hands that come out to try and get at them some of them would have uh, stone feet if they're in the legs if they have to go down the other leg to get to the rune they now have to scale down the platforms and be avoid being falling off uh going through the uh, the arms there would be uh sort of imagine just random stone pistons just slamming in multiple directions that they have to keep their timing and avoid and get through if you really want to be mean you or if you want to make things a bit more interesting you can have eyes positioned around the limbs and that is where the souls are able to see through and if you get in and destroy those eyes you can prevent them from seeing you making it much easier to bypass the traps and uh, enemies because they won't know where you are and if you want to be really mean you can have each round of those eyes shoot a random beholder ray um or goth if you depending on what you're looking at once you've done that you get the key you get the runes back into the main chamber each one will open a one of these sarcophaguses sarcophagi inside wrapped within the mummified remains is a uh, portion of so if you look at the key image now that the the lock the lock seems to be holding some kind of uh, pole arm or standard or something so e there'll be a piece of that standard located in each of the four sarcophagi so you have to open the sarcophagi and get those pieces together, figure out what shape they go in, put them together, and when all four runes have been aligned correctly, the stone lock will meld into one of um, usability, iron or mithril or adamantine or something, and they can slide the, uh, the, the, the standard key that they now have, which will open it, revealing the way to the in inside of the construct's head, which is the throne chamber. Sitting atop the throne will be the Sauruk Lord, wearing his crown, wielding his rod, and the voices of all four personalities that hopefully they've, they've come to know over the course of traversing this thing will also all be attached to the throne, and they will be able to communicate the entire time. This final battle is going to be a cacophony of people not shutting up. And um, the powers of the Saruk are that if he can use his rod to s manipulate the stone in any way he wants, so he can uh, he can conjure the, the floor to raise up below them, con the ceiling to come down, the walls to move over towards them, and he can also, of course, move his throne around the room as he sees fit, raise it up, put it against the wall. He is master over this domain. The crown also shoots beams. I originally was thinking they would shoot beams of petrification because it's basic theme and i think that that would be very fitting for a final boss fight to have to deal with something like that 
Um, but if they take his rod, if there's like one of them with a whip or they can get in there with some sleight of hand or something, then he's effectively powerless and they just have to fight him as is. And he's still going to be a worthy opponent, but it'll definitely make the fight much easier if you don't have to deal with all that. If you can get the crown off his head, that makes it even easier. Once he is defeated, the party now has to make a choice. They can either leave the souls entombed in the construct and take control of this massive war vehicle for themselves, or they can remove the soul stones from the throne and perform rites to release the souls and set them free, ending the ability to animate this thing and it's any chance they would have of controlling it themselves. Now, ideally, they've made a rapport with some of the voices as they've worked their way through and maybe want to help them, or maybe they're just thinking, ah, yes, I want a giant statue. I don't really care if it's technically evil to be harnessing souls to do so. Is that evil? I don't... It depends, right? <laughs> it's all a matter of perspective, right? Well, necromancy never hurt anybody. <laughs> To, co to cause the players even more emotional damage, I would like I like the idea that you that they're there. I mean, we we're only dealing with a one shot here, but in a larger campaign, that they're there for that explicit purpose. They need the war machine for something, and whether there's nice little mm. souls and spirits trapped in it or not, they don't get a choice. They have to. Well, they don't have to, but there is more motivation to keep them stuck, keep the souls yeah. stuck in there. I also figured uh, removing the rune stone. I didn't. I didn't explicitly state this. I was. It was more implica implied. But if you remove the rune stone from a limb, that disables the limb. So cool. once they've disabled the legs, for example, they bought themselves. So you're you're kind of um, incentivized to go for the legs first because that's going to immobilize the the construct and that gives you a bit more time to figure things out. But if you take the arms first, you actually have now given yourself even less time to stop the thing before it reaches the nearest settlement. Sure. So there's a little bit of choice there too. Have Have you ever read the module Earthshaker? Uh, I don't think so. I, okay. I it doesn't sound familiar to me. Check it out. It involves. It's an old, old school, just basic D and D product. Uh, but it involves an iron juggernaut. Uh, that's rampaging across a kingdom. Oh, <laughs> how about that? I love there that. You, I love there that. There you go. I mean, there's certainly not as much detail as what you've put in. Uh, for like how it's controlled in that. I think in that it's just a big mech, but I, I and I don't point that out to to attack your idea. I point it out because I'm like I think I'm pretty sure I've heard this heard uh, an adventure similar to this, uh, and I've always wanted to do the massive robot, uh, sort mm. of like um, even better. Imagine they had to fight a Tarrasque with it. Oh, you God. could totally do the um, uh, yeah. Godzilla the Godzilla uh, sort of uh, story. Yeah, no, that's great. Yes, that's great. I need it. <laughs> I need it so much. Maybe they could tie their own. Maybe the party could tie their own souls into it. Ooh, like, sacrifice play. Yeah, like let the souls there go, but they have to put themselves. Mm. For the greater good. I'm on board. And then I'm there's on just board. one jerk in the party that's like, I'm going to sit on the throne. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, we know that would be you. It would not. I am. Delicate and kind, it would totally be me. <laughs> I gotta take Ruin. out Hydrox somehow, man. <laughs> Thank you, Devin. Uh, Ruin, are you good to go? Yeah, I think so. You good to go? Let's do it. Let's do it. What yeah. did you come up with? All right, so I decided I was going to run this with Call of Cthulhu. And yes. uh, the basic premise of this would be that a farmer was digging a well on his property a few miles outside of Arkham when he uh, un covered a tomb uh, and uh, he didn't get to searching too far into it when uh, he called the museum because there was this mysterious lock and things in there that he couldn't figure out and he, he figured the museum would be uh, a good source of uh, help to you know uncover everything but in the time that it took them to get out there he'd been robbed and the only thing that he could figure out that was missing was the eye orb and uh, so he thinks that the Miller twins from down the road would have stolen it because he failed to pay them for some uh, some some moonshine that was going on. And uh, so they have to track that down. And then uh, that requires going and, and seeking out uh, if they can't find them at the farm, they could check a speakeasy called the Sleepy Cat on 53rd Ave. 
and uh, they will confront them there. And uh, if they fail an extreme intimidate roll, then uh, they will have to go into a brawl. But either way, if they don't, uh, if they don't uh, take the the Miller twins out per se, they will come back at the end of the scenario. But uh, basically, then once they get the eye, they can travel back, and uh, they'll notice that, similar to everybody else, the sarcophagi have that hole in it and when they place it in there uh it summons the reptile guy who i've determined is now an acolyte of yig and uh his staff is actually the key that will open up the lock which is a large lock inside of the the tomb walls and uh i think i forgot to mention that holding the eye orb actually requires a first of all a sanity check to see it because it's horrifying uh but secondly a pow roll a power roll to actually hold it and contain it uh they, they could try to figure out some nifty ways to get around that if they needed to um tongs. and then once they what's that tongs <laughs> yeah something like that tongs a sack i don't know <laughs> a um a salad you don't use Oh my gosh. Anyway, just go just like you know, the handheld salad mixers. Just yeah. How, about, like how about how about oven mitts? Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, a lot of food being tossed around here. You guys must be hungry. <laughs> um and then once they get the, the door open, that's when the, the hand thing attacks, and it's actually an illusion. But they have to pass a power roll again to see through that illusion. And if they don't then they will take um, a sanity roll, but the result of the sanity roll is that they will start flailing themselves around and smashing into the corridor as if they were grabbed by the hand. <laughs> and taking damage in the process. I love and it. And then, at the very end, uh, all they find is a tattered book, uh, which the farmer thinks is useless because it doesn't contain anything that he could read. Uh, however, it will be an incredibly powerful tome of forbidden knowledge. And then, if they didn't uh, take care of the Millers afterwards, as they're leaving the tome, the Millers come back to uh, seek their revenge. Nice. A bar fight is always good, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what system you're playing. A little uh, Donnybrook in the, uh, in the local pub. That's... Uh... I'm down for that. I'm down There's for so that. many options. You could smash a bottle. You could grab a a, a stool or something. You know, like yeah, you've got weapons everywhere. Exactly. Exactly. Right on. Right on. Fan of the Whoa. the pool cue, and the billiard balls. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, projectiles. <laughs> that really brings back the uh, uh, from dusk till dawn vibes. Oh, I love that movie so. Oh much. yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love billiard balls? Jeremy. <laughs> throwing that out there. All right. So, so thank you. I think that's our first call of Cthulhu of uh I believe so. This would be what what episode are we on here? Is this eleven? I don't know. We're kinda of starting over at one, right? Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's our first. I like that. Uh thank you everybody. Uh, I think I think highlights of the night. I love that the hand uh, smashing around. Uh, I'd love to hear characters describe themselves, uh, like rather than the GM doing it or the keeper, have the characters des describe how they're flailing about. Well, I said uh, in I chat that I just pictured Jim Carrey beating himself up in Liar Liar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Beating myself up. <laughs> that is perfect. Uh, well, since we're talking about prep, I don't are we? I don't think we're going to kill anybody tonight. Eh, yeah, I it's guess. Or die. It is an or. I don't think we're going to kill anybody tonight. Uh, if if you guys were prepping for a regular, you know, campaign session, let's let's not worry about one shots here. You've got your campaign night coming up. Let's say it's on I don't know Sunday. How much prep time the week before are you doing? Who wants to who wants to field that one first? How much prep time do you think you would do? Uh, depends on if it's the first session or we're midway through the campaign. Okay, so let's say we're midway through. 
I, in that case, I mean, I usually spend... So, f interestingly enough, my, my prep is usually two to three hours of me pacing around my apartment trying to come up with something, and then about half an hour of me writing it down. Okay, that's, that's fair. That's fair. I, that's I assuming that. I already kind of know where it's going, and I mean, it's usually I've come across a problem I don't know how to solve. I just have to figure out a solution that works, and then I can write all that stuff down. The problem is, is that once I start writing stuff down, I start adding more and add more and it extrapolates and it turns into two, three, four, five hours. Um, I, I'm, I, I write notes that are very um, detailed though. Like I write as if Shocking. I'm writing for someone else Never to read it. Guessed. So the problem I run into is that I, I tend to write a lot of extra detail, which ends up being good because then Five or six years later, I can go through the list of stuff I have and be like, hey, what was this about? Oh, yeah, this is exactly what I needed. And then I can take that and use yeah. it elsewhere without having to try and remember what it was. Because, I mean, when I'm a player, though, I take terrible notes and I'll just have, like, scribbles and I don't remember what they were. But as a DM... I'm a, I'm a lazy player. I don't take notes. I don't take notes. I'm like... Yeah, oh. I, I'm the guy who, like, Monday... Day, so if we're doing Sunday games, the Monday night... Like I already start prepping and I'm basically doing it pretty much piecemeal every day or throughout the week until the next Sunday. If you're in chat and want to drop us like sort of a timeline, like how many minutes in a week you would prep, throw that in there so we can have a look at that. Uh, Foxy, how about you? If you got if you got a session coming up this weekend, how much how much time are you spending on it? Probably like honestly a couple hours. Um, I, I like to take really long showers, like when I'm when I'm like I just like. I turn off the, I literally, I literally turn off the lights in my room or in the bathroom and I just like sit in the shower and I'll just like think for a while and then I like I emerge and I'm like big okay. mood <laughs> yeah and then I like emerge and I'm like I've got it and, and then I write everything down you know the shower usually... epiphany it's just yeah that, yeah, that, yeah that epiphany moment when you figure out when you figure it out is great yeah yeah I just and then and then you know after that like I'll usually like draw up a map and then like write little notes next to like all the areas in like I'll, I may draw multiple maps of separate different encounter areas, and then I'll write like write notes about like details of like stuff to describe in the in the different areas and like you know checks I have to make that have the players make and what kind of characters they're gonna encounter and etc. Then it's, and ultimately it usually winds up being like maybe like two hours, like a total prep. I think it's interesting that you mentioned maps because for me. I start with locations uh, when I'm prepping. I'm like, what locations are they likely to visit, and what do I have to have ready for when they're at those at those locations? So, and then that, we go the other direction. Yeah, well, that's the danger of it all, right? Is if you prep by location and then the party doesn't go to the location, you're you hate your party. So, <laughs> I that, that's why I kill a lot of players. That's why I kill a lot. Of, uh, Ran, Rando Rainbow says about two hours or so. So the two hour mark is, seems to be pretty uh, consistent. Uh, Sword Talon, about two hours. Uh, for every... Let me see here. About two hours for each hour or so of, of gameplay. Yeah. And extensive notes. Extensive notes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ruin, how about you? You know, if it's for the show, I gotta say like over 10 hours probably because it's, you know, learning a new system or something like that, but... Um, if it's just for like a, a group of friends, it's it's probably a couple hours if it's just a random scenario or um, I might go even longer if it's something I have a really big idea for. And then I'm like uh, Devin and I write lots of notes um, like I have notebooks that are just like the continued, I guess, chronicles of what they've done and things like that. Yep. Um, but I'm also terrible at keeping track of things that I've given them or, you know, things like that. I really rely on my players for that. <laughs> I, I know you like your Cthulhu, so tell me this. And and Cthulhu, far more investigative than combat uh, storytelling, in my opinion. Would you, would yeah. you agree with that? So okay. do you find that that, like, do you find that you have to prep more because there has to be... Like once the players start digging, who who knows which direction they're going to go with the information. So do you find yourself needing to prep more or? Yeah, I do. I do what they call the onion peel mystery, which is what they, they kind of say anyways, like when you're doing the system and it's, um, you really try to do layers. And so little bits of information that add up to one bigger thing. And so 
you do, at least I, plan multiple locations that they could go that give little bits of information that ultimately lead to one big area. Um, because you do want to give them the ability to kind of feel like they're in control of the direction, but ultimately, you're right, there's like, there's a mystery that they have to uncover. You know, it's not just treasure to hunt down. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have, Marcus says about two hours to an hour and a half. Oh, an hour and a half to watch Hawk the Slayer for the hundredth time for inspiration. <laughs> okay, Jason's in chat. Uh, Jason, you found your soulmate with Marcus. He may be the only other person that knows of Hawk the Slayer. And the yeah, Jason is a big lover. Uh, 20G Christopher, never prep. Improv for life. I I uh, I assume that, that that's not a joke. We're being somewhat serious. Like, uh, did the three of you, have you gone into sessions before with zero prep? Yeah. If he has, I have. I Has choked. anyone gone into a prep, a session with no prep? I wouldn't say zero. Yeah, like, I wouldn't say zero. Yeah. Probably like 15 minutes is like the least amount of time I've spent on prep. Yeah, I, I mean, I cheat because if like, it's like, oh, I've got 15, 30 minutes uh, to, to run anything. I'd be like, okay, what do I got? What okay, then here's my, here's my question. You got, you've got three friends over. Nobody knows what to do. Uh, someone says, hey, let's try that game that you play so much. Uh, could you oh. could you immediately just open your books and go, let's play D&D, let's play Dungeon Crawl Classics, let's play uh, Call of Cthulhu. Could you on the Upside fly down. right there? <laughs> In that case, yes, I have done that. Actually, now that you, now that you mentioned that. I got the uh, starter set for my cousin's 11th birthday, and we sat in the hotel lobby. I gave them characters, and I just ran like a 15, 20-minute like goblin ambush yep which that that and i had no i had no books i had nothing other than what was in that kit so that i did i don't really count that because that was like a really quick introductory encounter rather than like a full session but sure. i have done that sure uh foxy you were holding up a book immediately so you've yeah, obviously no. done this it's upside down i just like grabbed something <laughs> oh, there's... it was it? oh anyway here we go <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm derpy. Uh, yes, this is. I just run something from DCC that I've already read. You know, just like yep. they have these like modules that you can just pick up and just like boom, play some. DM. There, there is something to be said for being a DM that has some experience behind them that can go. I know exactly what I can just run off the top of my head. I've done it a hundred times. I've done encounter one, two, three. They'll line up fine, and we can do it. Uh, I pretty much run present in time. If like, like I got this, this particular module almost memorized so i could just run it for anybody yeah that's how i feel about lost minds of Fendelver. with the amount of times that i've run it as a player and a dm mm -hmm. i hate it mm -hmm. but i can do Ruin, it could, could you do it could you do it on call of cthulhu with no prep blackwater creek reach for it every single time so the... it's just a, it's something that you run enough that you're just like yeah. it's there yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's part of the uh, keeper screen pack. It's probably the most brilliant uh, one shot that you can get. Like it's amazing, and it can it can be run over multiple uh, evenings as well. I just have always had players that have usually finished it in a good four or five hour one. Yeah, yeah. Having kids, it's not uncommon for my kids to just go, "I want to play D and D tonight, Dad," and we throw something together on the fly. But it, it but it's like again, if you've been doing this a long time, you can just. You can just pull on your old stuff and just go, it's there. We can do this. Well, yeah, my, my main problem with the improv <clears throat> is that I, I always need everything to make sense. And when I'm doing improv, I can't always do that. So the more complex the story becomes, the less I can improv it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, well, listen, we're, we've are we run out of railway track. So th this ends our first uh, prep or die here on Goodman Games. I want to thank our three guests very much. I want to thank Affy for being here. For those that don't know, Affy does all our behind the scenes work. She makes the screen look beautiful. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, there we go. Thank you everybody in Thank chat you. who came out and said hi tonight. Uh, listen, if you're, we're, we're gonna be here every other Wednesday. If you'd like to come back and check yep. us out, you don't have to stop in for the whole show. Pop in for five minutes and say hi. Yeah. Pop in and, you know, tell me I look like a goof. That's, That's true. fine. I'm down with that. Yeah. I'm down with that. Uh, anything, I don't think we have anything to shout out. Uh, I'm, I'm DM Jeremy. You can find me on DM Jeremy here on Twitch. D DM uh, underscore Jeremy. Thank you. DM <laughs> underscore Jeremy. 
Athy, where where do we find you most often? Uh, most of the time, you can find me at the uh here on Twitch. I run a game on Mondays, and I'm in a game on Tuesdays and Fridays. I'm also in a game on Sunday night over on DM Jeremy's channel, and I will be thing. in another game every other Wednesday. So next Wednesday, on Jeremy's channel. Yeah, we're doing some DCC on my. We channel, are doing so. some DCC. <laughs> We're teaching ourselves, so there you go. <laughs> it's okay. going to be fun. Uh, but... Well, thanks, everybody. I yeah. hope you had a good time. And uh, we will be back in two weeks for more Prep or Die. Until then, I hope your games rock, and uh, we'll see you then. Yeah, check us out in two weeks. That's March 9th. We'll be here with Rhea from Critical Misses Podcast, The Litching Hour from right here on Twitch, and the ever-lovely Madam Vermilion, who we met on the Clock app, I believe. We did meet her yeah. on the Clock app. Well, thanks, yeah. everybody. All great people. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.